All right, I'm getting ready to head on back. The hut is over here. And we are going to head back. It's actually like late in the afternoon. It's, what is it called? Summer solstice? The longest daylight day in the year. So even though it's kind of late, I'm hoping that the daylight stays out long enough for me to actually do some work back here. Um... I'm not planning on doing anything major. I am basically coming back here to get a piece of wood. But I also want to look and see how things are doing. Um, and I can see a lot of grass back here, which is actually uh, going to be very useful here shortly for um, construction purposes. Although we might not want to pull it from there. I don't know. It just depends on what happens. Our little spider friend here has built another nest again. I mean, uh, Webb? Sorry, guy. I'm sorry. He's really gonna... He needs to find another home. He keeps building um, Webb right through here. Which is a very bad spot. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Our, um... Well, the yard is up. But what's surprising or interesting is this. My wife has planted some stuff here. I don't know if she planted these flowers. Or if they're just wild flowers. But they are blooming. I'm going to ask her if she planted flowers. But she did plant this, which is squash. And they are growing. I threw down some um, pepper seeds. So I don't know if they're growing or not. I don't even remember where I threw them down at. But um, here's some more of the squash. Our digger dug this whole area up and might have knocked that wall down or the wind did, I don't know. That looks like a new water bottle over there. That water bottle, I don't think was here before. So maybe some visitors came here and left that. But this is our um, little um, squash that will be growing here soon and some left here that was not killed by that animal that's been digging. I am going to fix this here in a minute. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Looks like everything's still intact. The animal is not out. And... You know, all you guys that keep talking about those, um, what do you call them? The skunk ape? You're freaking me out. <laughs> I keep expecting that um, one day I'm going to come out here and I'm going to peek through like this. And there's going to be a skunk ape in there looking right back at me. <laughs> Luckily I do have this, though, my machete. But, um... I, I, you know, at the first I thought the skunk ape thing was like a little joke that you guys were making up. But then I started looking it up. I was um, reading online about skunk apes. And apparently, oh crap, just hit a huge spider web here. <sighs> I think a spider just got all over me. Oh man. hope it didn't bite me. But, um, I was like watching... Um, videos on YouTube, documentaries, and on the internet about skunk apes. And apparently they're, they're real. Or a lot of, enough people believe that they are real. I think these are pepper plants that are growing right here. I planted some pepper seeds. So I don't know if these are grass or just pepper plants, but we'll let them grow and see what happens. But, um, skunk apes may be real. People were saying that the skunk ape marks their territory putting bones up like this, so... Maybe there is a skunk ape out here, which makes it kind of spooky. Um, but everything looks like I left it the other day, except for some stuff has blown down. We'll go take a look inside here in a moment. But for now, I want to go look at the um, the location for the new yurt, yurt 2.0. And yeah, it's like all dried out already. It looks like um, an animal was digging here. So you can see the, the dig mark. And over here too. So I cleared out this area. And our animal friend 
has come out here to check out this area already. Maybe kind of mark it to say, hey, this is his area and I'm impeding. But anyhow, I'm planning on building um, a yurt out here that's going to be better than the other yurt, in theory at least. Because we're using real wood this time and um, we're going to take the lessons that we learned from the previous build to try to build a structure that's um, a lot stronger. Well, we definitely have a digger here and he's been digging all around the camp. I don't know if this is dig mark or footprints. Just put my finger here for size reference. I don't know what it is. You guys have any ideas? We're gonna head back um, to the yard itself and try to get in and hopefully there's nothing in there. It looks like the structure is doing a pretty good job of um, not falling apart. It's interesting to come back in here and now there's um, just dirt. There are animals living in the ground digging up. I see a piece of wood has fallen here that I had braced up for um, to keep things from leaking. I don't know where it came from, but we'll put it there for now. <laughs> Looks like everything is as I left it, which is good. Though pieces of um, frond have fallen down. I don't see anything else too weird. Everything looks to be um, mostly normal. Hope we don't find a snake or something under here. But it looks like our bed is dry. Things are drying out. And the roof has pretty much stayed intact. Of course, it was just, was it yesterday? I think we were just here yesterday, so. Yeah, everything looks good. I don't see our mice, our mice, mouse friends. Um, and our central beam area here is strong. It's still holding up. So this shirt is actually holding up pretty well. As you can see, whoop, there goes the door. It is um, quite windy out here today. Um, but structurally, the, the yurt is holding up. This, um... This piece of wood here, I just pulled back from the, um, the yurt area. It used to be part of our flooring. Might not be the best piece of wood in the world, but it is available and free. So I'm going to use this as the, the center area for the yurt. We're gonna draw a circle. The plan is to make a circle on this, put it on th this one end, and that's where the roofing will be. And then the other end, we're gonna dig a hole and we're gonna actually mount it, you know, embed it into the ground. Maybe go down a foot or so deep. The beam is, I think, um, I don't know if it's eight or 12 feet. Maybe it's only eight feet. I think it's only eight feet long. Yeah, the beam is like eight foot long. So that'll make the yard only seven feet tall in the center, which isn't really that tall. But um, by using this board here, as a centerpiece, we'll give all the cross beams here, the um, rafters, these here, a place to rest on. So I'm gonna try to um, cut out a circle. The question is, how big should I make the center circle thingy? Truth is, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not even measuring. I just took some alligator clip thingies that I have here for a jumper test thingy, and I nailed down a, a nail in the center there. I'm going to try to get a pen or a pencil and then just run this around a circle to draw a circle along along this entire um, piece of wood here. And that's what we're going to try to cut out. And this is what we're going to base our, our center out of. I think this is a good size center um, because it'll, you know, extend out. It, it's, I'm going to guess about a foot and a half, almost, yeah, about a foot and a half, a little over a foot and a half. Um, it's about a foot right there. So it's about 18 inches out. So it's about a 34 to 36 
um, inch diameter, I think. So we'll try it and see what happens. You have to take this pencil now and hold it like this and pull it taut and just draw a radius, draw a circle. And that's what I'm going to do here. I can't very well do it in film, so I'm going to stop filming and try to do it and see what happens. All right, I managed to draw a circle here. I don't know if you can see the, the pencil line there. So we've got like a pretty decent circle size here. Now, I discovered a little late here that there's um, a hole right here. But if I tried to move it elsewhere, I think there's other little holes. So moving the circle or redoing it again isn't really going to help much. I could shift it a little bit and I think I could do it with no holes, but... I'm thinking this hole will be okay because I'm planning on notching. I wasn't going to notch, but maybe I will notch. I'm going to notch out a section to allow the, um, the rafters to fit in. To kind of help everything stay in place so it doesn't move around. I'm going to see if we do that, if I decide to do that or not, because that's more work. But um, it may be worth doing. So the sky is starting to make noises, so it might rain soon. So I'm going to go ahead and try to cut this out real quick and see if we can't um, get a nice round piece here. That'll be the top of the... Um, the yurt roofing. This is why um, an inverter is highly recommended. I have a um, 750 watt inverter here. Even though my house battery is kind of messed up, I've got the little blue two currently running right now, generating um, electricity that's coming back to the house battery, which is hooked up to this um, 750 watt power converter or inverter. And I've got it hooked up to my. Um, my jigsaw here which I'm getting ready to use to cut the circular piece that will become the center of the yurt um, and the reason we're doing that is just so that the beams will have something to rest on to kind of hold it stable seeing as to how our Jimmy rigged um, hexagon or whatever collapsed last time we're using uh, wood this time so the framework for the yurt will be real wood and then we may use, we're probably going to use fronds like we did before, but maybe even stronger. I might try to double them up or um, I'll figure something out. But the idea is to have a structure that's um, actually stable enough that it should be able to withstand maybe a hurricane. Of course, that's asking for a lot. <laughs> but we're going to see if we can't make one that can withstand a hurricane. So we're currently using our jigsaw. You can see here to cut along the uh, the line. I've got to um, stop filming here because I've got to use two hands because it's a little dangerous here to try to do it with one. But essentially, we are going to cut the circle out, and that should help. Um, make the whole roofing because that's where it was really weak with the roof um, a lot stronger and by using actual wood beams for the center and the sides I think we can have a structure that is um, going to be really sound so our circle isn't the best looking circle in the world but we do have the center it's kind of heavy actually a lot heavier than I thought it would be anyhow um, we now have a center circle for the roofing and uh, I just need to make all the the cross pieces where the hexagon not hexagon the octagon will go so we're gonna have to draw some lines to go across and then I'm gonna use that as our junction points where I will uh, attach um, the rafters at least that's the plan since I don't really have any tools with me um, I thought I would go ahead and show you how I'm trying to make sure that I get um, right angles and um, cut at the right degrees to make a, an octagon connection. I use this beam here as a um, straight edge to draw a line across and I use the nail in the center to help me line things up. And we went through that hole because we're going to cut a little slit here for the rafter. And then we need to also go down the center here and in the center there. So for now I needed a right angle. So I used a, a piece of broken tile here, which has a right angle, and I just lined it up to the line here and put it up to the nail. And I traced the line here to get us a, 
as close as we can to a right angle. And then I'm going to use this beam here to go all the way across, which I'll show you in just a moment. Well, this might not be a perfect right angle. It should be good enough. I basically laid the um, board here on the line here and went straight across. Just drew a line here to give us a guideline as to what will be the center. Now we just need to do the same on this side here. Thing is, we need a 45 degree angle, which I don't have. So I'm going to try to figure out how we're going to calculate and try to get this exactly in the center. I think we might have to do a triangle and then split the triangle in half. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do a triangle. Let me show you. It's going to be better to show. Hey, you know, geometry? <laughs> Little did we know that the uh, geometry that we learned in high school is now going to come into use. By uh, drawing a triangle here and then splitting the triangle exactly in half, I can get a right angle here and that'll give me a 45 degree angle over here. At least that's the plan. I think this is one of those things where a visual will help explain it more. So we have a 90 degree angle there and we need to go exactly 45 to cut it into an even pie shape. Now I didn't know where the center was here but what I did was I drew a line across here, a straight line using that board and then what we're going to do is we're going to use another tile here and just lay it down, see? If I can lay the tile down here right on this line you can see what I'm getting at. Now if I lay this down over this way, lay it right here, right on the line, and it should line up with the nail right there, which it pretty much does, then that will be exactly the center, because now we have a 90 degree angle here, which means this 90 degree angle being split in half right down the center will be 45 degrees. So geometry is actually useful. Now by laying our beam across all the way here, we were able to extend the line out, extrapolate and go on out that way. So that is split in half. So this piece is good. Now we just need to do this other one. And then we have our um, eight segments. Because right now we got, um, well, let me split that and we'll have our, our eight segments, which will mean that um, we are set, which is pretty cool. All right, we uh, drew our line and we laid our, um, tile here which has a right angle here onto our triangle and lined it up so we know that we have a line here that will go through that way and then we have all of the pieces for our hexagon hexagon no we're making an octagon not a hexagon so it's looking really good right now except for uh the sky of course um i thought this was supposed to be like summer solstice supposed to give me maximum daylight but it is getting dark already Unless I've been out here longer than I thought. So I'm not going to be able to do as much as I'd hope. Um, just simply because it's getting dark really fast. So now we have our eight quadrants. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our octagon. Now we're going to leave this ring in a circle. But what I'm going to do is where this junction is, each of these um, lines right here, we're going to cut a slit for our rafter beam to sit in. So I'm going to um, try to cut it right now and see what we can do. Thinking I should use the actual rafter size or I may have a smaller piece of wood here, which is the same. I think we'll use this. It's going to be a little bit easier to maneuver. This is the same as this, I think. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much the same. Maybe a little bit bigger, but about the same. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks to be a two by four. Well, it looks thicker for some reason. Maybe I'll use this one. This is slightly bigger, so we're gonna use the real one and um, try to um, cut out the portion where it will sit in. I think it'll become more evident what I'm doing once I start doing it. All right, so we've marked now where we need to cut. The plan is to cut in on this, probably up to here or so. I'm going to do it so I have a little square or something, but I'll, I'll figure it out. But I have to cut a notch like this for each of the junctions where the, um, what do you call this, those rafters will go.